The place? Anywhere in the USA. The time? Any day at any season of the year. It's the regular family quiz hour. That hour that seems to stretch on and on and on. From the beginning, the human being wants to know about things. As soon as it learns how, it starts asking questions and keeps on asking them. But then, without warning, comes a time when the questions taper off and stop altogether. What's happened? Just one thing. She has reached her teens. Does she really know everything? Often the teenage girl acts as if she does, or thinks she does. Her world is uniquely her own. Everyone else is rigorously excluded except other teenagers. And this teenage world looks to outsiders like a complete, self-sufficient entity, with its inhabitants possessors of the answers to all the questions that plague the rest of us. In reality, the opposite is true. Far from knowing all the answers, the teenage girl has reached the age of curiosity. Actually, the years between 12 and 20 are the most curious years of most people's entire lives. It's then that the search for answers becomes intense. Answers to what? Literally everything. Such diverse topics as boys, world events, fashion, cosmetics, careers, etiquette, literature, marriage. These and a thousand more involved with the teenager's future. All hold mysteries. School, of course, can't tackle all the subjects of teenage concern. But since being bright is very in these days, and because the pressure of getting into college is steadily growing, today more teenagers really care about learning what they are taught. Their need to understand also leads many to probe religious faith. Over half of America's more than 11 million teenage girls attend worship regularly. The same need to know often finds expression in the arts, either as participant or as knowledgeable observer. The teenager, for the first time in history, is fully involved in the cultural life of the nation. Teenage girls no longer read books intended solely for teenage girls. Their literary taste is as adult as they themselves want to be. And their musical taste exhibits a similar desire to be grown up. Girls looking forward to marriage in a few years strive to master the intricacies of homemaking at school and at home. The teenager's curiosity stretches into the kitchen where she learns from mother and experiments with new dishes, new menus for her friends, for her family, and for her family of the future. With the natural generosity of youth and the desire for personal fulfillment, many girls prepare for service to the community. Millions of girls work, part or full time. They do it to earn money, to gain experience for the future, and in many cases to glow in the satisfaction of a job well done. They also earn the right to the community's respect the right to be regarded not just as kids, but as people. They take part in school and community affairs, showing an urge for responsibility and the desire to assume more and more of it.
teenagers are people. And even though the future looms especially large in their young lives, they're primarily interested, like everybody else, in the present. One paramount concern of girls is, of course, boys. No matter where they may stand in their academic subjects, you can bet that the great majority of them are diligent students of the art of making themselves attractive. Here, their curiosity is boundless. They want to know what to wear on the numerous and varied occasions that make up their busy lives. They want to know all about looking their prettiest. They want to know how to be charming, all the more when they're in the company of someone who matters. Since more girls get married at 18 than at any other age, hundreds of thousands each year want to know all about fitting out a house or an apartment. No, teenage girls of the 1960s are a far cry from the isolated beings they sometimes appear to be. They're living, breathing question marks, interested in just about everything. They may well be the most inquisitive creatures on Earth. In their never-ending quest to know, girls in their teens naturally gather impressions and information from all the standard sources. But when it comes to personal, everyday problems, the questions to which they'd most like the answers, they don't always know just where to turn for guidance. Some grown-ups are okay, but they're too remote. Even if they understood a teenager's problems, they wouldn't really care. As for parents, they're not only too far removed in age, but too uncomfortably close in other ways. They'd get it all wrong and care too much. So the teenage girl often takes her problems to a girlfriend. But since the girlfriend's knowledge of the world is hardly any broader than her own, she can't always be relied on to help. What the teenage girl needs is a wise, steadfast friend who knows the world, especially the world of teenagers. A friend who understands them and respects their privacy. A friend they can trust. This particular need of teenage girls is met effectively by a publication produced expressly for them. Year after year, this magazine wins their confidence. One reason for this, and only one of many, is that the people who create it keep closely in touch with their more than five million readers by sending editors on cross-country tours to talk to teens, by carefully studying the thousands of letters which teen readers send to the magazine every month, by consulting teen panels that reflect the views of their contemporaries. 
For example, to find out what's on teenagers' minds, the magazine periodically invites high school editors to its New York office for a Turn the Tables press conference. Seventeen's editor-in-chief, Mrs. Enid Haupt, believes in giving teenage curiosity full reign. Mrs. Haupt, I don't find the boys in my high school very interesting. Where can I meet interesting boys? Well, I think the first way to meet interesting boys in your high school or any place else is to be interesting yourself. Learn about hobbies, other subjects. For instance, you take art. You would go to different museums. You might ask about their youth groups. Uh, you would meet young people there, then, who would have the same interests as you do. You could do volunteer work, join clubs. The important thing is to care about people. When you care about people, you become interesting yourself, and then other people want to know you. Mrs. Haupt, my sister is 17. She wants to get married, but my parents object. At what age should a girl marry? Oh, well, actually, there is no age for a girl to marry. Some girls are ready for marriage at 17, and some are not ready at 27. Some people are never ready for marriage. But actually, marriage is the merging of two people. So two people must be ready for marriage, because if a girl is ready for marriage at 17, and she marries a boy who is not ready, it will not be a happy marriage. I believe both young people should be quite aware of the problems of marriage and be mature enough to handle them before they consider marriage. Mrs. Haupt, if a girl is not good-looking, how can she make people like her? Well, any girl can be good-looking. She must learn how to style herself, how to comb her hair as becomingly as possible for her own type. She learns what colors flatter her, what, um, what silhouettes flatter her figure. She's groomed well, and she likes other people. And she goes out of the house and she's very proud and confident because she knows she looks as well as possible. Mrs. Haupt, why are parents so immature? Well, now really, I don't think all parents are immature. Actually, for the first time, as you grow up and you're in your teen years, you see parents as people. You see their weaknesses as well as their strengths. After all, don't forget Mark Twain. I think his observation of his father will go down in history as the greatest of all times. He said, when I was 14, I was surprised at how little my father knew. And you know, when I was 21, I couldn't get over what he had learned in a brief seven years. <laughs> Why, no, just the beginning, because the country is growing younger. By 1965, half of the population of the U.S. will be 25 and under. 40% will be under 20. This teenage market is big. 11,065,000 young women today. 13,100,000 by 1970. Now is the favorable time to create demand for your product. Implant preferences for your brand. 97% of all teenage girls help prepare family meals. 17 magazine families spend more per week on food than the families of any other consumer magazine. The teenage girl herself spends 25% of her family's food budget. She can suggest a brand, she can select a brand, she can switch a brand. Millions of girls work part-time. The average teenage girl has over $10 a week from earnings and allowances. Together, they have over $6 billion to spend as they please, plus billions more from father's checkbooks and mother's charge accounts. Teenage girls, while they represent only 11% of the female population, account for 20% of all women's apparel and footwear sales, amounting to $3.7 billion a year, and almost 25% of all cosmetic sales. One million teenage girls are engaged. 600,000 will marry this year, and the peak marrying age of all women is 18. Three million teenage girls will marry in the next five years. Take flatware, for example. Two million teenage girls already own flatware, and 1.7 million will begin to collect theirs within the year. 
the median age of acquisition is 17 years. This major market can be sold through the pages of one major magazine. 17 offers quality circulation. Over 1,110,000 ABC June 1963. 66% newsstand sales at 50 cents per copy. Balance, full paid subscriptions. No cut rates. Every issue is read by every other girl 13 through 19 in the USA. Over 5 million readers. No other magazine saturates its market so completely. 17 sells. Advertisers know it. That's why, for 10 consecutive years, 17 has led all monthly women's magazines in advertising lineage. Retailers know the magic of 17 and show it by the tremendous volume of their local tie-in advertising with 17. And 6,805 special in-store promotions tying in with 17 magazine were conducted by retailers during 1963. The girl under 20 is your four-star sales prospect. Mature, influential, important in her family and in her own right. A big, big buyer now and for a long, long time to come. Remember, it's easier to start a habit than to stop one. Start her with your brand in 17.